Today's video, I want to chat to you guys about how to close a business. Good day, my name is Hein Ruge from the SA Accounting Network and I've been in the accounting industry since 2008. So over the years, I've dealt quite a bit with businesses when people want to close businesses as well. Of late, a lot of people have been receiving notifications from the receiver of revenue and also from SIPSI where they're threatening the guys with legal action and saying that the companies are going to be deregistered and you're going to get in all sorts of trouble. And that is the reason why I decided to record this video as well, just to explain to you guys what the process is and, and how the process works to deregister a company. Just for clarification, um, yeah, at the moment, that is this, what I'm going to share with you guys is how the process works at the moment. But with the receiver of revenue and even with SIPSI, we work with a moving target, so stuff changes all the time. So at the moment, this is the way that you need to approach it when you want to close a business. So remember before, just before I start with the presentation, remember to give the video a like, remember to subscribe to my channel, and then let me get onto my computer and I can show you guys what it is about. So let me talk you guys quickly through the process of what you need to do if you want to close a business in South Africa. So I think what I'm going to discuss just briefly is the first one. I'm, I'm going to just touch on dormant companies, what your responsibilities is. If you've got a company that's basically the shell that you registered, you never did anything like that, we can unpack that a little bit. Then we're going to start looking at trading companies as well. I'm going to give you guys a brief overview of what it is to do a voluntary closure of a business and then obviously what it is to do a compulsory closure of a business. Um, obviously in the legal field and in tax world, they've got different terminologies for this stuff, but I'm just trying to make it as understandable as possible for the normal person out on the street. So let me quickly explain to you the dormant company situation. Let's say, for instance, you open up a business, let's say, for instance, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, you registered the company with the, with, with SIPSI, or back then it was called Cypro. So remember, as soon as you registered that company, they sent that information through to the receiver of revenue, and that company automatically got a tax number. <clears throat> so something changed. Um, and in the past, if you open up that company, never trade it or anything like that, then Sipsi said that if you don't file your annual returns for a couple of years, then automatically that company would deregister with Sipsi. And the same assumption was always with the receiver of revenue, that if you just leave the thing, don't do anything to it, then it's obviously just going to go, just um, disappear into the abyss eventually. Unfortunately, I would say about 2019, there was a change in the legislation. Now, since then, they actually started making this thing a bit of a more formal process. So in the past, it just used to be automatic thing, leave it, it just disappears. Now they said, no, they want to actually have proof that the business is not trading, that you're going through a process of deregistering that company. And I think one of the reasons why I can assume that they're doing this as well is that the receiver of local revenue is looking for money, Government hasn't got any money anymore, so this is a soft target. They can just go and give these guys penalties for not submitting outstanding returns. But we'll talk about the penalties in a bit. So yeah, first thing, dormant company. So that is if you registered a company, let's say for instance in 2000, you had this idea in your mind that you want to start the business. But eventually you got so busy with life and work and stuff that nothing ever happened to that business. You never opened up a bank account. So in old terminology, it was just a shell company. So it was just something lying on the shelf over there. And there was nothing done with it. So in theory, there wouldn't be a bank account. So that is probably the test or whether the business, whether traded or not traded. As soon as there's a bank account in the name of a company, there's transactions linked to that, to that bank or to that company as well. And remember, the receiver of revenue receives data from the banks to say that if there's a company and there's a bank account linked to it, then they see can, can see that there's money going through that account. So even if you're just putting money into that account just to keep that company open, there's still transactions happening. So in theory, that the company is not a dormant company because you're paying bank charges, you're putting money in to buy a loan account and all that type of stuff. So you can't just say, sorry, the company never traded and therefore um, yeah, um, you just want to file it as a dormant company. So I think it's just important as a starting point, just remember the definition. And normally by, by default, the first thing that you would obviously need is you would have to go make an affidavit to say that you registered the company. Let's say for instance in the year 2000, here's the registration number, here's my details of the director, that you never pursued this business venture and therefore you decided that you want to close the business, you want to deregister it with the receiver of revenue, deregister it with SIPSI and that is basically what that affidavit would state. Without that document you can't even start the process of, of going through the process. So let me explain to you the first thing 
with the receiver of revenue is because the guys are getting these notifications, you must file all the outstanding tax returns. That's going to be step one. After that, you need to find the tax clearance certificate that you need to get from the receiver of revenue. Once you have those, that document, the tax clearance certificate, then you need to submit um, just for the filing of the outstanding tax returns. So obviously, those returns are going to be filed as zero returns. So the very first page, there's a questionnaire. It's just going to say the company never traded, but then sometimes such ones prove that the company didn't trade. And that is where that affidavit comes in. You see, so it's really, really important that you do that affidavit because that's obviously the starting document that you're going to use. <clears throat> Once you have your tax clearance certificate, you as the director of the company or the member of the CC or whatever the format it is, you need to send SIPC a letter to state that you want to apply for the deregistration of the company. That process unfortunately takes a while. Normally six months later on average you will receive an email back from the SIPC with a certificate which they call a deregistration certificate. So that is proof that the company was deregistered at SIPC. Once you have the deregistration certificate in hand, you need to go back to the receiver of revenue. Normally an in-person appointment or you would have to make a telephonic appointment or video appointment to say that you want to apply for the deregistration. And then once you have the affidavit that you were talking about plus that certificate from SIPC, and at the end of the receiver of revenue, then in theory, they will deregister the company tax return number. And then after that, your responsibilities regarding that company is then done. So that is in short the process that you need to follow to deregister a dormant company. Where the problem comes is when it comes with the receiver of revenue, you basically have two different ways that you can find your outstanding returns and or and to get the tax clearance certificate. So the first one is if you do it online. So you can do it online. You'll see that I did a video of how to appoint a representative on e-filing. If you don't represent or uh, um, activate the representative, you can't access anything about that company. So that's going to be step one. You're going to have to take the registration documents. You're going to have to take your ID, proof of address, the affidavit. And then you're going to have to go onto the SASH system. You'll see that I did a video on that system as well of how to appoint a representative. Do the representative appointment. That process probably takes about two or three weeks. Sash will maybe get back to you and say they're missing this document or this might be certified or there's something missing. And only once that process is finished, then we, we have the ability to link that company to your e-filing profile. And that is the second bullet point that I said that the representative must be registered on e-filing because there's no use to go through the representative appointment, but there's now no place to link that company to you. See, so after that, once we have the e-filing for the representative, remember that is you as the director, then we need to go to the next step to link the company to your e-filing profile. So when you log into e-filing, you'll have a drop down. We can choose between your personal e-filing or the company's e-filing. Once you have that ability, then you can start finding the outstanding tax returns. Once you have all the outstanding tax returns in, then you can apply for the tax clearance certificate. And then once you get your tax clearance certificate, email that through to SIPC six months later, you get your deregistration certificate. Then you need to make that appointment for your final deregistration. So on the SASH homepage itself, there is a place there where you can make appointments. So that is how the online version would work. The second option that you've got, which might be a bit easier, if you've got no intention to get this company registered again or to do anything with it, is go visit the SASH branch, take your affidavit with, take the registration documents, take your ID book, take your proof of address, and then you go sit there at the SASH branch, say to that SASH person over there that here's the red documents, you received this SMS, you never started trading on this company, here's the affidavit, please file all the outstanding returns while he's sitting there at SASH and give you the tax clearance. Once you have that tax clearance certificate, same process, you must email SIPC to say, listen guys, company never traded, yes my tax clearance, I want to deregister. Six months later, you get your certificate from them, then you go back to SASH for a second appointment to do the final deregistration. So I think that is the challenge that we've got at the moment with the receiver of revenue. <clears throat> Remember everything that I've discussed so far relates to dormant companies now. If you start looking at, at trading companies, <clears throat> so there's two different um, types of, of ways that a trading company can, can be closed. So the first one is a voluntary closure. So if I've got a business, it's, for instance, it traded five years ago and I traded with a business and eventually I decided, no, this is not profitable anymore. I've paid all my creditors. I've got no outstanding money, but I do have the accounting records for that then this is the process that you would follow then. So same again, the receiver of revenue, as I mentioned in the previous slide, 
all the stuff over here on the left hand side would be relevant. You must still do the representative appointment. The representative must be linked to e-filing to link the company. Then you can start doing returns, tax clearance, all that stuff still stays the same. But now, because the company was trading, you need to file the outstanding returns. So on those company tax returns, you must declare what was the income, what was the expenses, what was the assets, what was the liabilities, what is your equity. All that stuff goes onto the, those tax returns. And then you can submit the company tax returns. Even once the company, let's say for instance, five years ago, it stopped trading, you still need to submit all the tax returns since it stopped trading because obviously there were still some records on the company as well. If the company was registered for pay as you earn, there's a form they call it EMP123 that you need to complete. There is a functionality where you can do it online as well, but that is the form. And then for value added tax, if a company was registered for VAT, then you need to complete a VAT123 form as well and submit that through to the receiver of revenue so that they can deregister those two tax numbers. So remember, there's three tax numbers, company tax, pay as you earn, if you, were, if you had employees, and the last one is value added tax, if your turnover was high enough that you had to register. And then the same process happens again, get your tax clearance certificate, go to SIPC, apply for the deed registration, six months later you get your certificate, go back with that certificate to the receiver of revenue, and then you apply for the final deed registration of the company tax. So the pay is earned, and that you can deregister quite quickly, but the company tax return, they won't deregister that until you've got the deed registration certificate from <coughs> SIPC. Then the last one is if you've got a trading company, it's a compulsory closure, so that is um, if your business is traded, obviously you might have accounting records. And this is normally where it becomes very technical because that's in, in, in places where you're basically liquidating the company. So if you've got a million rents worth of assets, but you've got two million rents worth of liabilities, you can't pay all your debt, then this is the procedure that you would follow. You would normally go see lawyers, they would get liquidators involved with the process as well. They will do evaluation of the assets and the liabilities. They will draw up a liquidation account to say that if there's only one million rent in that they can get cash and there's two million rents worth of creditors, then every person will just get off their money. So that is quite a big formal process that you have to go to. Normally there's courts involved and then obviously such and creditors are also quite involved. So this is a very specialized thing and this is where we definitely have to get uh, professional advice. <clears throat> so I think just another thing that you must keep in mind as well, that if you did register with SIPSIM and that you did register with SARS, then don't forget about the Department of Labor. That's really, really important as well. If ever you were registered for UIF, you have to inform those guys that you're not an employee anymore, that you need to deregister workman compensation as well. You have to deregister uh, with workman compensation if you ever were registered over there. If you owed suppliers money, remember that you can't just say to the guys, listen guys, I'm not going to pay anymore. You must sort out those suppliers over there. And I think something that a lot of people forget about, uh, about as well as employees. And I think I just wanted to just to add that on so that you guys are just aware of that. So Yes, so that, this is in a nutshell how it works if you want to deregister a company. So just remember once again, just to give the video a like, remember to subscribe to my channel. And if you guys do need help to deregister your company, inside the description of the video, I'm going to share a link where you can pop us an email or fill in a form and then we can see if we can get in touch, you guys in touch with the right person that can assist you with the closing of your business. Thanks for watching.